adequate notice for the CDC has been given in accordance with the Open Public Meeting Act and pursuant to public laws 1975. Said notice is advertised in the beacon and posted on the bulletin board showing the time and place of the meeting. Please rise for pleasure allegiance. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The only one on the, on the agenda is the special use permit, uh, 332 Route 9 CBD Wellness and United Mortgage. Um, these two are new businesses to that um, yeah, strip mall there. It's across the street from the Forked River Diner. They want to have a grand opening celebration on November 2nd from 11 to 2 since it's outside the scope of their business and they have... Um, uh, they want to use the parking lot. They just need permission. Loretta and the chief have reviewed it. Loretta, our zoning official, and the chief of police have reviewed it, and they uh, they have okayed the um, item. I just need your for or against. Take a motion on this. Move it. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. But, so, I, anybody have anything to add on to the caucus or no? Nope. We mm -hmm. take a motion to adjourn. Move it. Second. In favor? Aye. Aye. All right, moving right into the Township of Lacey. Okay. Adequate notice for this evening meeting has been given in accordance with the Open Public Meeting Act for the Public Laws of 1975. Said notice was advertised in Asbury Park Press, and the beacon was posted on the bulletin board showing the time and place for meeting. Before we go to the pledge and, and, and moment of silence, uh, keep Mayor Kevin in your prayers tonight. Deputy Mayor Kevin, thank you. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Okay. Uh, number one, first reading of 2019-16 amending Chapter 178 of the Municipal Code, Code created short-term rentals. In order to the Township Lacey County of Ocean State of New Jersey, creating Article 2 in Chapter 278 of the Township Code of the Township of Lacey, which shall be entitled Short-Term Rental Regulations. Basically, the title does explain itself with regards to short-term rental regulations. It gives the definitions of the different types of dwellings. It talks about the purpose and the scope of this ordinance related to short-term rentals, and basically the gist and the of it will be that no dwelling or segment thereof may be rented or leased for a term of less than 30 days. And then it talks about the different types of room rentals, uh, rental amenities, advertisements, and of course, obviously, the um, enforcement of such. Second reading will be October 10th, and at that time, members of the public can come up and speak um, with regards to that ordinance. Can we have a motion to adopt on first reading? Move it. Second. Mr. Canis? Yes. Mr. Cartolo? Yes. Mr. Giuliano? Yes. Mr. Dyko? Yes. Mayor McDonald? Yes. First read of Ordinance 2019-17, creating Chapter 243, Nuisance. In Ordinance of the Township of Lacey County of Ocean State of New Jersey, creating Chapter 243 of the Township Code of the Township of Lacey, Lacey, which shall be entitled Nuisances. This is a companion ordinance to the three of them that we're doing this evening. This is with regards to excessive use based on nuisances on, on uh, to the municipality for nuisance properties, what's prohibited, what are qualifying calls, um, you know, calls resulting from violations of state laws, regulations, or ordinances, including but not limited to those citing in the list, and I'll go over the list, or others not so identified but specifically determined to be qualifying by the hearing officer, but not including calls from permitting licenses, inspections, or similar administrative functions. So the sales, service, or consumption of alcoholic beverages, disorderly conduct, disturbing the peace, littering, or excessive noise, damage to property or injury to a person, improperly parking a vehicle or any other motor vehicle violation on private property, possession of a barking howling, biting, or dangerous animal, possession, distribution, or use of a controlled substance, prostitution, public urination, 
uh, indecent exposure, criminal activity, and township property maintenance, zoning, construction, fire, and health codes. And obviously there are um, fees that um, a user fee of $300 for each additional, additional qualifying call made to the subject property within a 12 month period following the date of a complaint is issued for excessive consumption of municipal services. So again, the second reading is October 10th, and at that time the public may make comments. Motion, please. Move it. Second. Mr. Kennis? Yes. Mr. Curtolo? Yes. Mr. Giuliano? Yes. Mr. Dyko? Yes. Mayor McDonald? Yes. First reading of Ordinance 2019 18, creating Chapter 278 rental regulations. In order to the Township Lacey County of Ocean State of New Jersey, creating Chapter 278 of the Township Code of the Township of Lacey, which shall be entitled rental regulations. This is the purpose of this is, you know, we obviously will designate a hearing officer by the Township Committee, will designate a hearing officer. Obviously, the definitions again of who's a landlord, uh, substantiated conviction. Complaints, noise, and hearing penalties um, are, are outlined in this, and what the fees and the fines will be. And again, that is usually, a, a, you know, it, it is set by the, and there should be um, bonds that a, a, a homeowner may have to post anywhere from five to five thousand dollars with regards to this. And proceedings against the landlord and the forfeiture of that security if, if there are known violations and they're they're basically convicted. And again, second reading will be October 10th here at in the town hall. Motion, please. Move it. Second? Second. Mr. Kennis? Yes. Mr. Dykoff? Yes. Mr. Curtolo? Yes. Mr. Giuliano? Yes. Mayor McDonald? Yes. <coughs> First reading of Ordinance 2019-19, amending Chapter 323, Vehicles and Traffic. In order to the Township of Lacey County of Ocean State of New Jersey, revising Chapter 323 of the Township Code of the Township of Lacey, entitled Vehicles and Traffic. What this is, is, a, is related to parking. It regulations not exclusive. It's the provision of this chapter imposing a time limit on parking shall not relieve any person of the duty to observe other more restrictive provisions prohibiting or limiting the stopping or standing of vehicles as set forth in New Jersey Administrative Code 39 colon 4 138 and 39 colon 4-56.5. And this is re related to somebody who parks a vehicle in their street and they never move it with um, 48 hours or more. So um, that it can be um, towed um, from the street and uh, put into the impound yard. This first reading, second reading will be October 10th. Can I have a motion, please? Move it. Second? Second. Mr. Kennis? Yes. Mr. Dykoff? Yes. Mr. Giuliano? Yes. Mr. Curtolo? Yes. Mayor McDonald? Yes. First reading of Ordinance 2019-20, authorizing the <coughs> acquisition of a portion of Block 163, Lot 3. In order to the Township of Lacey County of Ocean State of New Jersey, authorizing the acquisition of an easement on portions of Block 1633, Lot 3 from Barbara Smith in accordance with NJSA 48-12-5A1. Many of you may know that for numerous years we've been working on uh, installing a traffic light on the corner of Lake Barnegat Drive and Haines Street. This is one of the first steps we needed to acquire some easements. After uh, several negotiations, we have now accomplished at least one easement. We still have a second one to go. And the amount of the fair market value for um, the, the portion of the property we need is $7,100. Can I have a motion, please? Move it. Second. Mr. Kennis? Yes. Mr. Curatolo? Yes. Mr. Giuliano? Yes. Mr. Dykoff? Yes. Mayor McDonald? Yes. Second reading. Yes. Second reading of Ordinance 2019-14, amending <coughs> Chapter 159, the Uniform Construction Code. Norton's of Township Lacey, County of Ocean State of New Jersey, amending and supplementing Chapter 159 of the Township Code of the Township of Lacey, entitled Construction Codes Uniform, so as to amend 159-4, entitled Adoption of Fee Schedules. This is adjusting various fees, um, and this is also removing some fees that no longer pertain in, in uh, the construction code due to changes in state law. Second reading, uh, can we have a motion to open the floor? Seeing my motion to close the floor. No, we, well, need we need a motion to open the floor first. <laughs> open the floor. <laughs> <laughs> no Any comments on this ordinance? Yes. I'm sorry. See, now I'll take a motion. Seeing our motion now. to close the floor. <laughs> Second. All in favor? Aye. Motion on the ordinance. Yeah, I need a motion on the ordinance now. Move it. Second. Mr. Curatolo? Yes. Mr. Kennis? Yes. Mr. Giuliano? Yes. Mr. Dyko? Yes. Mayor McDonald? Yes. Uh, Second reading of Ordinance 2019 15, authorizing the acquisition of Lot 1676, Lots 24 through 26. In order to the Township Lacey County of Ocean State of New Jersey, authorizing the acquisition of Block 1676, Lots 24 through 26 from Robert and Ramona Dolery in accordance with NJSA 48-12-5A1. This is uh, as we're doing some cleanup through the properties. This is a 
60 by 100 parcel that's in the middle of Gilly Park. Um, that <laughs> um, obviously it, it does no good to the owner. We have gotten a fair market value of six thousand dollars that will be paid to the owner so that we can clean up those maps. Can I, second reading, open the floor to public comment. Any comment from the public? Seeing no motion. motion to close the second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion on the ordinance, please. Move, Move it. it. Second. Mr. Caratolo? Yes. Mr. Kennis? Yes. Mr. Giuliano? Yes. Mr. Dykoff? Yes. Mayor McDonald? Yes. Resolution 2019-264 authorizing the change order for Lakeside Drive East Project. Resolution of Township Lacey County of Ocean State, New Jersey, authorizing the execution of an amendment to the contract with CJ Hess Incorporated for the Lakeside Drive East Road Improvement Project. This is the final quantity exchange order. Um, this is a decrease in the original contract price in the amount of $7,429.35. Can I have a motion to authorize this? Move it. Second. Second. Mr. Kennis? Uh, yes. Mr. Curtolo? Yes. Mr. Giuliano? Yes. Mr. Dykoff? Yes. Mayor McDonald? Yes. Resolution 2019-265, canceling taxes due to disabled veterans exemption. Resolution attached at Lacey County of Ocean State of New Jersey, authorizing the tax collector to cancel 2019 taxes due on a property granted the 100% disabled veterans exemption and refund the resulting credit balance. This is on block 206, lot 3. Motion? Move it. Second. Mr. Kennis? Yes. Mr. Curtolo? Yes. Mr. Giuliano? Yes. Mr. Dykoff? Yes. Mayor McDonald? Yes. Resolution 2019-266, canceling outstanding <coughs> municipal court checks. Resolution of Township Lacey County of Ocean State, New Jersey, authorizing the cancellation of old outstanding checks from the Lacey Township Municipal Court account. There are two checks, and the total is $21. Move it. Second. Mr. Kennis? Yes. Mr. Dykoff? Yes. Mr. Curtolo? Yes. Mr. Giuliano? Yes. Mayor McDonald. Yes, resolution 2019-267 authorizing placing a lien on the property for property property maintenance, sorry. Property maintenance. Resolution of Township Lacey County of Ocean State, New Jersey, accepting the certification of the Director of Public Works concerning costs incurred in the removal of debris and cleaning up of the property located at 1226 Laurel Boulevard and authorizing the placement of a lien against said property for said costs in the amount of two hundred and three dollars and sixty two cents. Motion? Move, move it. <clears throat> Second. Second. Mr. Kennis? Yes. Mr. Dykoff? Yes. Mr. Giuliano? Yes. Mr. Curtolo? Yes. Mayor McDonald? Yes. Resolution 2019-268, authorizing the refund of deposits. Resolution Township Lacey County of Ocean State, New Jersey, authorizing the refund of deposits held for the use of municipal facilities. Motion? Move it. Second. Mr. Kennis? Yes. Mr. Curtolo? Yes. Mr. Giuliano? Yes. Mr. Dykoff? Yes. Mayor McDonald? Yes. <coughs> Resolution 2019-269, authorizing the payment of the township bills. Move it. Second. Resolution of Township of Lacey <laughs> County of Ocean State, New Jersey, authorizing the payment of township bills in the amount of $828,267.40. And that was a motion by Mr. Kennis and a second by Mr. Curtolo. So Mr. Kennis, yes? Yes. Mr. Curtolo? Yes. With noted abstentions? With noted abstentions. <laughs> abstentions U4498H. 1572 and 01021. And Mr. Giuliano? Yes. Mr. Dykoff? Yes. Mayor McDonald? Yes. Noted, noted extensions on H2746D0400 and U4498. Uh, motion to approve township meeting minutes of September 12, 2019. Move it. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion to approve caucus meeting minutes of September 12, 2019. Move it. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Comments from the I have, um, oh, I, yeah. I have some yeah. add-ons. Yeah. Two add-ons are <coughs> fire company memberships for the Lenoka Harbor Fire Company for, let me get here, uh, Matthew Todd <coughs> and, let's see the other one. Oh. Joseph Gaffira we did last time. I have it here. How it goes. And Richard Richmond Cole. So I have a motion to approve those two gentlemen. Move it. Second. All in favor? Aye. And next I have two resolutions to add on. First is resolution number let me get there. 271. A resolution of Township Lacey County of Ocean State, State of New Jersey. Uh, appointing Dana DeBella to the permanent part-time position of clerk for the Township of Lacey and the Code Enforcement Officer. And this is a part-time position, no more than uh, 20, uh, 19 hours per week. Can I have a motion? Move it. Second. Mr. Kennis? Yes. Mr. Dykoff? Yes. Mr. Curatolo? Yes. Mr. Giuliano? Yes. Mayor McDonald? Yes. And the final resolution is Resolution 272, 
It's a resolution of the Township of Lacey County of Ocean State, New Jersey, authorizing amendments to the local government personnel policies and procedures manual and the employee handbook for the Township of Lacey. These are various updates that we need to do in accordance with um, various changes in the law and insurance regulations. Can I have a motion? Move it. Second. Mr. Kennis? Yes. Mr. Curtolo? Yes. Mr. Giuliano? Yes. Mr. Dykoff? Yes. Mayor McDonald? Yes. That is all I have to add on. Sure. Yep. <coughs> uh, comments from the committee? Deputy Mayor Kennis? I have no comments tonight. Uh, Mr. Giuliano? Yes. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, this Saturday, uh, again, we're going to be uh, blessed with Lacey Day and the Apple Festival, so please uh, pass the word around so we can get a nice turnout like we normally do. Um, also this Saturday at 945 we have the run for the heroes which will be coming uh, past town hall here at about 945 is that right Lee? from what I know yes. yeah about 945 yeah. so it'd be nice to have a good crowd out here uh, to support them as they're riding through um, we, we all well, went I guess a lot of people I see some faces out here that came to the whole tech meeting at the middle school uh, pretty informative uh, but keep on asking questions because that's the only way and, and there's a lot of different ways you can do it um, through um, uh, Congressman Kim's office and uh, there's ways to get around and ask the questions. I mean, there's that's what that's your right to do. So anytime you have anything to ask, do it and they'll, uh, they'll get back to you or, or ask us up here and we'll find the answer out if we don't know. Um, that's all I have other than... Uh, on a little bit of a somber note, um, uh, I lost a good friend of mine a couple days ago, uh, Charlie Kennis. Uh, good man in this town. He served on the uh, uh, Board of Education. Um, I got to know him over the years. Uh, I thanked him many times uh, for everything he did for Lacey Township because he, uh, he brought Lacey Township development the way it is to where it is today. He has a lot to do with it. So um, I'd like to say to you, Mr. Kennis, I love you, buddy. That's all I have, man. Thank you. Uh, Commitment to Thank you. Um, <clears throat> unfortunately, some residents of the township are not as considerate of their neighbors and their <coughs> neighborhoods as they should be. <clears throat> and tonight we took the first step in uh, passing ordinances to curb that, unfortunately. It, it has come to that. Um, it's not something we, we take lightly. It's something we do with a lot of thought and a lot of input from the other residents in town. So um, if you have comment about it, as um, Administrator Lorray mentioned, you can stay until after the meeting and comment, but we do have a second reading of an ordinance. That's the way our process works. So before we finalize the passing of these ordinances relating to the rentals and short-term rentals and nuisances, and parking, I implore you to come to the next meeting. Uh, that's, you know, and stay for, for this meeting and, and, and you, know, you know, speak your piece then. But um, we're just trying to make this township the best we can for everybody and improve the quality of life. Uh, we've got a great township, we really do. One of the reasons we have a great township, well, two of the reasons, <clears throat> first is our employees. And we said goodbye to a very, 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 very valuable employee this week, Karen Inamorato. And I got to know Karen and her late husband, Tom, many, many years ago, probably around 24, 25 years ago, when Tom and I coached uh, soccer for our two little girls. Now, Tom was the coach and I was the, uh, the assistant coach. And I can tell you, I didn't know anything about soccer. I knew kids and, and we had a lot of fun and I got to know them over the years and I was proud when Karen came to work for the township and watched her grow within the township and she became an invaluable employee to multiple departments. She moved around whenever we needed to fill a, a position in the township. She was one of the people that we turned to and she'll be sorely missed but she's going through a life with her daughter and granddaughter in Florida and we all wish her the best. <clears throat> of course, another person who made Lacey Ray was the late Charlie Kennis, um, of course, Stephen's father. And, and the interesting thing is, Charlie was, and his building, and a lot of people, some of you might have Charlie Kennis homes, uh, was one of the, the reasons we came down here, because we came around and saw the developments that Charlie was building and the homes he was building, 
and it just it was different you know I, I had we, we were from North Jersey and as we came down to to South Jersey I, I looked at every town and my father-in-law who, who were, I was in business with came down and he said I found where we're gonna live it was Lacey Township and uh, Charlie was was a, a leader in the community over the years serving in many 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 positions giving his time um, great family man and, and he'll be sorely missed and, and Stephen you know my heart goes out to you and Thank your you family are. and uh, you know anything we can do to help you know don't hesitate to ask Appreciate Thank you very much Jimmy Cortella Thank you mayor <clears throat> just wanted to remind our, our residents that at any time if you have a question about an ordinance if you have a question about uh, the nuclear plant Please email us or call 693-1100 and just let us know. Um, the SIFs or Stakeholder Information Forums uh, that Whole Tech has held uh, over the last several months, I have felt that they've been informative. <laughs> they have been in contact with us, but we can't ask every question. We know there's heavy regulations, state, federal oversight, NRC. If you have a question, let us know and we'll forward it on to you and then we'll email you back. So. You know, we want to be that, that conduit of inf information um, if you couldn't make it to one of the last two sessions. And so I just wanted to say that. In that same line, and it'll lead to my, my third point, I, I've been looking around, I talked to a lot of stakeholders, talked to a lot of businesses. Uh, the, the state of the Lacey economy right now today, in my opinion, is as strong as it likely has ever been. And we have unemployment at all time lows. Um, we have interest rates at near all-time lows. We have housing that's continuing to go up, foreclosures that are leaving. People want to be here. We have a finite amount of land that we can develop. I like the quality of life. I like where the nuclear plant is going. I like the new rateables that are coming to town. And I love the people of this town. Um, that's why I chose to live here. I want you to feel free to call me or anyone up here at any time. Um, the things that I'm telling you tonight are true. It leads into my third point. When I started to run up here, um, Stephen and I are uh, some of the longest tenured people up here, almost six years. Uh, Steve was my running mate. I didn't really know him other than to be active around the community. Uh, but as we knocked door to door over these last several years and these last primaries and these last general elections and I would always get you know the, the, re the reverberating theme that just kept coming up was the Kenneth's name it it's an impeccable name in our community and I never said Charlie to Mr. Kenneth I always called him Mr. Kenneth he was like a dad to everybody um, and the amount of respect from a, a business point of view and from building that Route 9 corridor and from caring about and sending kids and grandkids through to Lacey schools um, you know I, I, I ended up getting a running mate but what I really got was a friend because that's what Steve Steve is you know normally I address him as deputy mayor and everybody up here for decorum but tonight he's Steve and I'm always Pete because I love the guy and I just uh, you know, if he told me to, to walk through a frozen lake for him, I, I'd do it. He's a good man. He's a good, good man. I know him, and I know his mom, and I know his kids. And I'm telling you right now, they don't come any better than Mr. Kennis or Stephen. As I'm on the Veterans Commission, I wanted to remind, I was downtown Tom's River advocating for our veterans today, and I just want to read an announcement. On October 23rd at the Ocean County Library in Mancini Room from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. If you're a veteran, if you're on our commission in Lacey Township, or if you're not, uh, come down there October 23rd from 9 o'clock to 3 in the afternoon. We're going to have nurses there doing finger sticks for glucose, uh, in, anything that you can need for baseline, baseline information if you're a veteran. If you're having a hard time, if you need connections to benefits of the VA, there's going to be people there to help steer that too. So we want to do some outreach to our veterans. I mean, there's going to be cholesterol, blood pressure, everything. Let's uh, try to help the veterans. Please get that word out. October 23rd, 9 to 3, the Mancini Room, Tom's River Library, right down the street. I want to thank all the employees that uh, were here yesterday in our town. I'll close with this. Uh, they volunteered and were part of our employee wellness program. A lot of people came here and 
uh, got some of those tests I just mentioned, finger sticks for glucose and blood pressure. <coughs> um, you know, a healthy workforce helps everybody. It, it decreases absenteeism and presenteeism. When people are here, we want them to be productive, and I can tell you our Lacey folks are extremely productive and our department heads continue to really top the charts in getting grants from Trenton that comes at no direct cost to our county taxpayers. Up here, we check that and we require it and they do it and they do it without us asking so i'm very proud of all of them i'll close with that comment mayor i thank you thank you, <coughs> thank you pete you're welcome steve you're my uh, friend i'm going to start with charlie kennis uh, i never told steve this my wife and i were at, uh, this has got to be five years ago my wife and i were at applebee's and charlie and his wife came in with his grandchildren and the grandchildren were acting up a little bit. I waved to him and talked to him. I looked over one time and there was Charlie just beaming. He was with his grandchildren. It says a lot about a man. He wasn't worried about what people were saying. The kids weren't were well behaved for the most part. But they were just being kids and acting up in a restaurant. And, and I just was like, yeah, that's a good man right there. And if you look around this town, you'll see Kenneth's name everywhere. And in fact, I own a Charlie Kenneth's house. So uh, my condolences, Steve. Thank you. All right, moving on. Um, let's go here. Uh, this is another notification that the Ocean County Road Department will be milling and paving Station Drive from Route 9 to the railroad right away in Lacey. That is beginning on Monday, September 30th at approximately 7 a.m. It's going to last a couple of days, so there may be some delays. So you may want to make some uh, changes in your driving routes for that. Lacey Day is Saturday. It's also Apple Fest. <coughs> and, uh, the Historical Society has come together and we, we do it all over here at, at Gilly Park and um, it's just a great, great day. Uh, I get to taste the apple pies. I'm the judge of the apple pies this year and I love apple pies so we're going to see who, who can really cook an apple pie. Um, today, uh, Commitment Dykoff, myself and Veronica were on a conference call with representatives of um, Congressman Kim. Uh, Senator Booker's office and Senator Menendez's office about the power plant and working to getting some money. Um, and there's been a couple of bills with regards to, to the spent fuel rods. There's been a couple of bills that have gone through and so forth. Um, and I was pleased to not, I couldn't remember whether it was Senator Booker's office or Senator Menendez's office said it. Uh, one of the bills just got marked up and they put out a press release. And that's money, come, hopefully it's money coming to Lacey. Uh, I asked for a copy of the press release to be sent to us and unfortunately it had, didn't arrive. I was hoping to have it for tonight. As soon as we get it and we think it's a payment appropriate, we'll put it on the website. Um, it's a step in the right direction, but you gotta remember something. Unfortunately, we're a blue state and the Republicans are controlling the Senate. So we'll see what happens there. So this is, and I, I pounded them, this is, an Democrats. urgent, urgent Democrats. matter for us. Dem Democrats are controlling the Senate, not the Republicans. Republicans control the Senate. Republicans control the Senate. Democrats control the Congress. Sorry. They control the House. Sorry. Anyway. Sorry. Jeez. Sorry. Now you interrupted me. My <laughs> the train of thought. <laughs> Sorry. The train of thought. Yes. So, I did pound them about the urgency of this. Um, you know, these things have been here for 50 years, and they're still things call them temporary. Is there something wrong? There's something wrong here, and we need to get this thing straightened out as quickly as possible. So hopefully, we'll have some better news as we go forward, but I wouldn't count on it. Uh, the whole tech meeting went as I thought it would go. Uh, the union guys showed up. They had some, some very legitimate concerns. Uh, I had a talk with Jeff Dossel after that, and let me explain what happened with the union and that. The union had an agreement with Exelon. When it was transferred over to Holtec, that agreement was over. Holtec is in negotiations with the union now for to, to see who's going to come in and work in that, that plant uh, when they start tearing it down. So that's, it's not that they're going to, they're not anti-union. There will be union jobs in there. I was guaranteed that by Mr. Dostal. Uh, and I, he's been a good 
good friend to us and good in, good in communication. So I'm going to take the man at his word. Um, had the went out to the PBA Oktoberfest, which was a lot of fun. Um, they do a good job. I don't think people realize how active our PBA is here. They really do a good job of um, working with the young kids so that when they get to be teenagers and they start to, start to wander off that great trail that they're supposed to be on, that mom and dad hopes they go down, they got them and they can push them back on, onto that trail. So uh, they do a real good job. So that, that was a real good time. Um, and I see that uh, Gavin's out in the audience and I do want to talk about something. We, we, it's a silly <coughs> season and the elections are out there and there's signs all over the place and you'll see our signs up and so forth like that. Um, those signs cost money and, and we, we just respect them. Just respect them. They don't need to take them down or something like that. If you disagree with Gavin, you disagree with somebody, that's the way this country is run. Just respect the signs. And you're going to see a lot of people out in the next couple of weeks walking all over Lacey Township. So I don't care whether you're a Democrat or a Republican, it doesn't make a difference to me. Just respect that. That they, they, put, they, they raise the money, they're out there, and if they put the sign out, that means that person kind of endorses them and so forth. So it is what it is. Just respect that. That's all, that's all I ask for. Um, and with that, I'm going to open up to the public. Does the public have any comment here this evening? This man in the back there. State your name and address for the record, please. Uh, Mike Galbavy, 9 Dunbarry Drive here in Forked River. Uh, have a, uh, a compliment, a concern, and a couple of questions. Okay. I'll start with the compliment. All right. Um, I noticed the recent paving behind uh, Wawa and the police department on those dips that were in there. It looks like it's been done for a month or so. Right. But uh, I'd like to compliment you on that because uh, cars shouldn't be speeding through there, but I have seen an awful lot of cars going maybe 30 miles an hour or even people on bikes lose their uh, yeah. balance in that. So uh, that's a job well done. Okay. Uh, the concern, and I know it's a county road and it's uh, near the uh, uh, Parkway exit off of 74, but uh, there's two huge holes there. And um, if, you, if you veer off of the southbound lane, it's and on the you, overpass? Uh, no, you pay the toll, <laughs> and then as soon as you're making the curve to get on Lacey Road, which I know is a county so it's, road. it's the overpass, though? No, it's not on the overpass. No, It's on the, it's on the it's, exit? It's, it's at, after you pay the toll, you go up about 100 feet, and you curve to go on. Right, that's Lacey. still New Jersey Highway 30. That's not a county I got road. It. Okay. Yeah, okay. Got that. I understand that. Uh, but then as soon as you get on to Lacey Road, there's a longer rut there, and they're both pretty steep. Uh, pretty deep so uh, I know it's County Road I, I that's still New Jersey Highway Authority there's a portion of that area that's still New Jersey Highway even though it might be, be named Lacey Road okay so it's what, all what should be done uh, I can just send a, an email out to the New Jersey Highway Authority asking that, them to come and take a look at that'd it. be great because uh, I mentioned something to the police on Lacey Road and they said it was County Road but two days later that was filled in and it was pretty bad by one of the uh, chiropractic mm -hmm. ones uh, all right uh, I was pleased to hear uh, you mentioned some details about your meeting today uh, on the phone with Senators Booker's and Menendez's office and Kim's office. And I I'm here just as a concerned uh, resident, not a member of any group tonight. But um, I was wondering, when there are more detailed meetings that you've had with, let's say, Holtec in the past, or you continue to have with them, do you normal? Uh, because you've come here uh, at uh, town meetings and you've said, we had a great meeting with Holtec last week or whatever, and one or two things were mentioned, and then it was kind of like, you know, it's going on. Is there a, a, uh, an apparatus for further informing the citizens of the town as to what you're actually talking about at meetings that you might have with Holtec or uh, the state, the NRC or whatever? Um, the meetings with Holtec, we, we talk about what we can talk about in the public when we say, you know, we ask them, because some of this is private stuff and internal stuff that they, we want, we want to know what's going on down there and they don't want it out in the public. So 
we, we never have more than two okay. representatives up, up there, usually okay. me and, and somebody else. Right. So we're very cognizant of that. Um, what we can talk about, we do. And, and, and there's some stuff that they don't want us to talk about for obvious reasons. Well, I understand that. That's how yeah. government works right. and how negotiations work. Right. But if, you, if you're saying you can inform us on things that you can, so to speak, right. that's appreciated. We do. We okay. do. We talk about it as much as we can. All right. I'll finish up with one last one. Um, Holtec has been pretty insistent that they don't see a need for a consumer advisory panel or a consumer advisory board. Mm -hmm. I know that Congressman Kim's office, from what they've told us, that they would like to see something like that. Does the town have an opinion on that? Do you see merit in it? Do you we we disagree on that. <laughs> you and I disagree. Us. No, no, no. <laughs> amongst amongst us. Oh, amongst you. Amongst us, we dis we disagree on that. Okay. Um, I, I don't know if we'll ever hash it out and get it resolved, but you know we do talk about it from time to time and try to figure it figure it out. Yeah, my concern was it can get pretty awful, I guess, if. You know, you have somebody wanting to inspect every little right. thing that goes on. But I think there's a lot of resources in this town the, the, if the right people were put on no, there. There's no question about that. And <coughs> the one the one that's causing a lot of problems is up in Pilgrim. Uh, that right. that advisory committee, they've just run amok. Mm -hmm. And it's really, really created a problem for whole tech and and Pilgrim itself. Right. The, the one thing that we need in this town is is to get that down as quickly and safely as possible so that can be redeveloped right. and, and we don't want an advisory committee holding that up that's that's the big big issue that's one of the that, that's exactly that's exactly right so we do talk about it from time to time um, I don't see a real urgent need for it at this point in time because of just doing some minor minor stuff at this point in time um, if, we, if we feel it's necessary um, then we will we'll, we'll put it in place. We did have a problem with whole tech early on. We weren't getting great communications. We held a meeting. We asked for better communications, and they answered the bell. So we're now getting not executive level uh, information, but one one level down that type of information. Okay, that's encouraging. Thank you very much. Thank and you. at those forums, sir, yes, they're, they're televised. I mean, they're yeah. not, they're they're yeah. recorded. Correct. What I'm saying, and, and so, like I said in my comments, that dovetail with what the mayor is saying, send us an email if you have a direct question, and then we'll get back. I mean, right. we have an ongoing dialogue with many people in this town through through that system, and that's what it's there for. No, Click on our pictures and, and email us. Yeah, to this point, we haven't been bashful about asking questions. No, no you have not. No, you, <laughs> you have not. Or volunteering information, but thank you. Thank right. you. Anybody? Uh, Gavin, come on up. Hey, let him oh, okay. Let All right, him Gavin, hold let on. Him I was here one hour before you start. Right. Come on down, sir. <laughs> you don't know me, but two people around. I've been seeing her for years. We've been seeing each other for years. <laughs> My good buddy over here. State your name, Gavin. I am glad to see you still have a full house. They came out just for you tonight. You know, I was thinking about that. <laughs> um, Patrick Rawls. 615 Beach Boulevard, Falcon River. Hello. Hello. Yes. 615 Beach Boulevard, Falcon River. I'm here to lodge a complaint. Excuse the. I promise I won't be here two minutes. Excuse this. I had an eye transplant over a year ago and I don't think it's working. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's it, very funny. <laughs> but wait till you live alone, can't see. You go to the store and you don't know what to buy because you can't see. <laughs> I've lost 50 pounds. That's, <laughs> That's, 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 That's a good diet. That's a good diet. That's a good diet. I am here because, as he asked me tonight about my Mercedes, I have a 1967-68 Mercedes convertible. A 450 SL. I've had it for since I bought the car. Okay, he knows he he had a business on that. Has he I made, sold he, you a lot of parts. Buying right? parts yes, for I him do. Has, has he made an offer for you on the car? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> you don't get a killing on me. <laughs> Anyhow, this is what happened. You don't mind me using this magnifying glass? Not at all. 
I got my name. I went to Main Street to find out the rules for erecting a temporary shelter out of plastic and two by fours. I needed to paint my car. Now, I live next to a neighbor, neighbor that every time I try to paint my car, he comes in and he cuts his grass. You know, he's a very nice guy. So I decided after I've been sitting there for 30 years in my prop on my property up against the fence, be sitting there for 13 years, I painted it like six times. Every time I painted, issues, problem. Nice guy. So I, I went to Main Street and I spoke to a Mr. Douglas Donahue. Yeah. Correct. Mm -hmm. And I told him I need to know the rules for erecting a shelter. I wanted to repaint, totally repaint my car. Okay? He made me uh, write out a sheet of paper with a magnifier. I didn't even have a magnifier. Yeah. He found one. And I filled it out and I thought that was it. Two days later, I got a, a letter, denial of application, from, uh, what was her name, uh, Loretta Rule. okay? So I says, what is this? A few days after that, I got a notice of violation, order to terminate, from the guy outside there, Mr. Downing. I said, whoa, one and one is 11. How did he get this? You know. Anyhow, I went into to, to, to the state's main street and I spoke. I said, listen, I'm here because I need from you the ordinance, copy, copies of whatever ordinance you're trying for. All of a sudden, this guy picked up. At him. This attitude was bigger than my size. You know, Miss, whatever her name was, she came when she was, oh, all of a sudden I found she was a very nice person. Loretta Rule. Mrs. Rule, yes. Yes, and she was trying to tell me, and this guy was standing right there, he wears glasses, right? He was standing right there, and uh, he tells her to shut up, and tells me to leave or he's going to call the cops. I says, pardon? I said, I happen to be paying your salary. I am a house You can't tell me that. So I said, look, I don't want to speak to you. I'm going to continue to speak to the nice person, the young lady. Now, I don't know. He wasn't wearing an ID saying he's a boss, a sub-boss, or whatever. And that everyone else there was a subordinate. I don't know. But she was speaking to me. And he looks at her and tells her, no more. So there's no need for me to stay and hang around there now before I get in trouble. So I turn around and leave. The next day, the guy who was in charge calls and tells me uh, there was no need for me to come in, that I should speak to Mr. Downing. I said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to bring it up here to the mayor. I said, I haven't been there in about 13 years. Oh, I feel good going there to see who's mayor. And then I said, my good friend here. <laughs> and I said, then, how are you doing? You running for me? He said, I was mayor last year. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's it. I don't know what's going to become of it, but these are the issues I have. Uh, it says, accessory uh, structures not permitted. I want to know why. That's one. Two, define conforming location, please. And three, why no copies? If you put zoning on Google, it tells you these are public records. And if you own a house, you're entitled to them. That guy tells me to go look in the computer. I can't even see to read the piece of paper. <laughs> he wouldn't give me anything on it. It's on the internet. I said, sir, you're assuming a lot. You're assuming, one, I know how to read. Two, I have an internet. And three, I can see. Besides a lot of stuff, you know. Anyhow, that's all I have. Thank you very much for listening to me. Sir, yes. stick around. I want to talk to you. Oh, shit, no problem. Me. I'm retired. She has not changed now. Gavin, come on. <laughs> Gavin, you, you, you have a tough act to follow. That's what I was going to say. That is it.
tough act to follow. He um, says the microphone being really tough. Yeah, yeah, why don't you do the microphone? Yeah, we'll, we'll let the professionals adjust. <laughs> Sorry about that. No, that's fine. Thank you. Gavin Rossi, Fork and River, New Jersey. Uh, first things first, Deputy Mayor Kennis, uh, my condolences to you and your thank family. You. Uh, you know, thank you for your father's service. I'm, I'm sure the residents of Lacey, they're going to remember that legacy. And uh, it's just one of the things that makes our town great. Um, along that vein, Mayor McDonald, I'd like to thank you for your comments uh, regarding the sign issue. Um, you're right. You know, it is the First Amendment. It is the democracy of this country. Uh, if folks want to support myself, if they want to support somebody else, that's fine too. Um, you know, I was very pleased with the way that the police department handled it. They were very thorough. Uh, they stayed in communication with me, and uh, I'm very satisfied with the result. Uh, at this point, I'd like to put that all behind us, and I think for the good of the residents of Lacey, now is the time for us to just move forward uh, with the issues rather than... Uh, silly season as it's called um, so along that vein uh, in case everybody isn't aware I am one of your candidates for Board of Education I'm here tonight with my running mate Sonia Marcatello uh, unfortunately our other team member Sal Armato could not join us this evening um, but I just wanted to come up and say hello put a, a face to the name for those that may not be familiar with me out in TV land uh, we had our first meet and greet this week at the Lacey Library uh, it was very successful unfortunately it did conflict with the timing of the whole tech meeting so maybe not everybody was able to make it out there but we did have a very good turnout uh, we do have another meet and greet coming up on October 9th uh, at the Lacey Library uh, 6 30 p.m. we hope to see everybody there and uh, that's all I have thank you thank, thank you, you. Thank you. yes ma'am Thank you. Says, you know, it's when you're a parent. Excuse, excuse, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's Sonia okay. Marcatello, uh, 232 Sunset Drive, Morgan River. Um, as I was saying, you know, when it, I don't know if you're a parent or not, but when you, whenever you get a compliment about your kids, it kind of makes you feel good as a parent, like you're doing something good. And to hear all these great things about your dad, you know, you kind of feel proud that they're your parents Thank as you. well. So. Um, so my name is Sonia Marcatello, and I am running for school board uh, this year with Gavin Rossi and Sal Armato. And yes, thank you, Mayor, for taking care of our sign issue. And we are moving forward and hope that everything can run smoothly at this point. Um, I just wanted to show up tonight to put a face to the name. So when you see our red signs around town, you know who that number one line is. Um, and so I just wanted to give you a little bit about myself. That's all, real quick. Um, I've lived in Lacey since 2004. I have two children. One's a freshman in high school, and my daughter is in sixth grade at Mill Pond School. Um, I've been very active with their activities around town, and um, I'm a nurse by trade. I do some home care, so I have been around, and I just wanted to get a question from you. Um, the veterans event, the health fair that they're having or screening, is that sponsored by the VA or by the health department? Just so I can share that information. This is, uh, this is sponsored by Ocean County Prosecutor's Office, Prosecutor Bradley Bill Heimer. Wow. And uh, I know that uh, our our freeholders and our prosecutor's office cares deeply about our veterans. This is for them. This is a smaller copy, but I posted a larger one right in our hallway. Okay. Uh, I'll snap a picture. Right to my left. Okay. Please snap a picture yeah. of it. Spread okay. it and share it on Facebook. Sure. Thank you so much. Yeah. And please and, come. Um, yeah, I, it, it sounds, it, you know, anything we could do for our veterans, I think, is worth it, even if it's just a little tiny thing. So. Um, so that's really it. I was just going to make it short and sweet. If anybody has any questions, you can reach out to us through our Facebook page, um, Marcatello, Rossi, and Armado for School Board. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Lender, come on down. <clears throat>
Good evening, Barry Bender, Historic Bay Avenue. Uh, first of all, Committee of Tennis. I think your dad's name was the second name that I heard in Lacey Township when I moved here in 1988. Uh, he's a well-known and well-respected gentleman. And sorry for your loss. Thank you, Barry. Um, wanted to talk about uh, the Oyster <laughs> Creek, uh, the uh, the meeting with our uh, federal representatives. And I mentioned this at a town hall meeting with uh, <coughs> Congressman Kim. Um, for years, people who got energy from nuclear power, they took fractions of a penny at, from your bill, and it went to a fund that I knew way back when as the host community fund. That fund reached billions of dollars. In 2004, there was a gentleman who I was helping run for committee here who brought that up as part of his campaign, that that money needed to come to Lacey Township, that money needed to come to Ocean County for, if no other thing, to improve the evacuation routes in Ocean County and in Lacey Township. For years, now we're talking 2004, okay. For 15 years, there was really no conversation. I'm hoping the horse is not out of the barn when we finally do get this money, because the most important thing we need to do as far as this plant goes is improve the evacuation routes because I remember years ago, I don't remember what year it was, there was a fire in the Pine Barrens and it reached the moat at the power plant and I live on Bay Avenue. If you wanted to get out of here during that, that time because the parkway was cut off, you would have had to have walked on the roofs of the cars. So what I'm saying is this money, hopefully if we get the money, it's a little bit late, but hopefully we can use it to improve evacuation routes out of here in case something does happen, especially mm -hmm. when they're decommissioning because I think the odds are raised a little bit during that time period. Just another comment, having campaign signs disappear or damage, et cetera, is a long history in this town. I can speak from experience. In 2015, when I ran against the mayor, we had an actual 4x4 four four sign, not a little lawn sign, but a 4x4 four 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 sign disappear. So hopefully, I mean, I, I, I take vandalizing campaign signs, I would put up in the same category as burning the flag. You're, you're kind of spitting on our, on our country mm -hmm. by doing that. So I hope people take that to heart. And I thank you for speaking up about that, Mayor. Right. Thanks very much. Mr. Bender, if I yes, could. Sir. Yeah, and let me tell you, the people are going to clap. I, I don't want anybody to touch anybody's signs. I don't think that's right at its core, and it is like spitting on the country. You might as well be living in the Soviet Union. I, mean, that's the way I couldn't agree you. with you more. I don't want any, anybody to do that on my behalf or anybody on the other candidate's behalf. I, that's not right. It, it, it's, it's, makes, it's nauseous. Yeah. To your point with evacuation, and it was a point of contention in, in our town for, for many years, but one of the thoughts behind that road at the rail trail road now behind Home Depot was that as an alternate parallel of evacuation to Route 9. Now that has, if you, if you talk to the folks, the good people at Sunrise Beach, they will tell you that, especially in the summer, they don't have to wait for seven lights anymore to make a left or right on Route 9. So that road has reduced traffic and it will and does serve, God forbid, as an alternate point of evacuation. Well, yeah, people out on, on as, and I mentioned this when we were at the, the town hall meeting, there's one bridge on and off LBI. If there was really a disaster and people had to get off LBI, I would hate to see what that would look like. So that's a part of it also. Mm -hmm. Thanks very much. Thank you, Thank sir. You. Yes, sir. State your name and address for the record. Bill Fogger, 1100 Orlando Drive. Um, I know you went through this really, really quick, one, two, and three, so I just want to reiterate that. Is this pertaining to our situations with the Airbnbs? 100%. 100%. Okay. I will post these okay. new ones because the ones that I posted, what, two weeks ago were the draft ones. They were still works okay. in progress. Yeah, and as you can see, those were two, or we're d we did three related to this. So I'll post these uh, tomorrow. I'll have the staff post them. Veronica, so you have. Can I give him my copies? Yeah, you surely can give him my copies. Here. That's great. I really appreciate that. And the other thing I wanted to bring up was in the last meeting you talked about uh, taking the spent rods by boat or by. Yeah. As, that anything going on with that? Or? No, we haven't heard, heard anything new. 
Um, so I yeah. work for PSG and they Okay. I don't think I don't I don't think the barge is gonna be the way it's gonna to be too expensive. They're gonna to have to dredge every six months and that just gets ridiculous. So we, but they can encapsulate the rods before they think about Oh yeah, they'll they'll be in they'll be in their storage and stuff like that. So hopefully um, there's an a back road in the back of the plant that comes up to the parkway. Hopefully that's the way they go out and then, then we can help develop the business parking by using that road. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sir. Any other comments from the public? Yes, sir. Uh, the name is Arthur Ricciardi, 157 Amber Mist Way, Forked River. Question is really a very basic one on Oyster Creek once again. Does the council have any information on the impact to the ERTs? Have you gotten any information on that yet? What, that what are ERTs? The energy the tax credits. Oh, oh, the the energy energy tax. Tax. No, we haven't. It is, it is one we worry about greatly. Okay. Any uh, expectation of when we might hear something? We, we've been in correspondence with the state and with legislative services through yes. Senator Connors' office. And um, it's obviously, a, a, legislation can change at any time related to any matter mm -hmm. okay so uh, we get 11.1 .1 million dollars as most of you know at one time we were getting up to 17 million dollars mm -hmm. we used to get it directly to the township for all of the utility generated in this town whether it was telephone cable um you know electric gas well the state back in the late 80s decided to change the legislation mm -hmm. and then it went to them and they took their piece of the pie now every municipality in the state of new jersey receives some of that money in various different um, amounts based on what is generated through their community so we they take their piece off the top and we get ours at 11.1 .1 million they call it state aid for us and it's definitely not state aid and in order for us to get the 100% of the 11.1 .1 million, we have to uh, score between a 90 and a 100 on what's now called the best practices che checklist. And if we don't, we lo use, lose some of that money. So again, we're being penalized for that, but we've never lost any of it because we've always scored very highly on our best practices. So they're penalizing us for that too. So at this point, based on the way the current legislation is written, we can only lose at this point up to five hundred thousand dollars so it would go from 11.1 .1 to 10.6 okay but again they could change the legislation and change the formula which would not only affect Lacey Township but every municipality in the state of New Jersey there has been no talk about that the talk has been to restore what everybody should previously right. have been getting without the state dipping into it so there's been push and, and uh, legislation that's been um, put on the table and discussed but it's gone nowhere to restore what we should be getting so the other interesting point and, and I don't know if you're aware there is an offshore wind farm mm -hmm. company Orsted mm -hmm. who's looking to build a wind farm off of Atlantic City and run their transmission lines through Oyster Creek mm -hmm. so again this energy receipt tax is based on the infrastructure so that bodes well for us that gives us a very good argument you know to, to maintain that mm -hmm. money so listen they, they seem to be gung-ho um, we'll see so right now you know we'll know you know as Veronica said or I believe she said we're, we've been in close contact over the years with Senator Connors who, who's you know basically our, our conduit to, to the Senate to the state of New Jersey so as soon as we know something we'll uh, that's one thing we'll let you know thank you can I get a second very quick question sure. on the water park we've heard some numbers about what the park generated and the assumption I've made is it generated in revenue X dollars mm -hmm. do we have a net figure of what the profit yeah. margin was on that? well okay <coughs> we haven't made a profit on it yet okay. um, the, the, the cost is $160,000 it brought in about 90 well eight the water park itself brought in about $82,000 mm -hmm. this year uh, when, we, when we sketched this thing out and what we're working on, we figured two and a half years before we would start seeing a profit on it. Uh, and talking to our recreation director, he believes he could go over a hundred thousand dollars next year. Revenue. Revenue. So, if that's the case, we pay this thing off probably in the middle of August sometime. If he, if, if those numbers hold true, and that'll be the profit on the, on the other side of that. But the assumption is there's expenses associated with it. not just Correct. paying down there. Correct. Is there a debt on it? No. Yeah, there, but 
but the expenses we did not hire any additional staff to fund that park this summer it was done with the staff that we had so whether i had we had that water park or not those individuals yes already. what we did was just um move people around okay. and yeah so there was no additional staffing expense on the township's part no additional insurance expense on the township's right. part we checked that out we right. had a meeting with the mayor uh because one of the concerns i think some folks up here had is this going to make is it going to be cost prohibitive is it going to make our insurance absolutely did not so I'm, I'm very pleased right, with right. that that's gonna that's gonna draw some revenue and over the next couple of years you really got to thank our police on this they did a great we were really nervous about it night kids etc cetera, etc cetera. Uh, we did take precautions monitors things like that but they did a great job of, of, of patrolling that area and uh, we do know that at 745 for some reason there were kids on that every night <laughs> what are you gonna do yeah. I thank you thank you Any other comments from the public? Seeing none, motion to close the floor. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Resolution for executive. Aye. Resolution of Township Lacey County Bush State of Jersey authorizing the convening of executive session to discuss matters of personnel. Motion? Move it. Move it. Second. Second. Who made the motion? Steve and Miss, Mr. Kennis? Yes. Mr. Curtola? Yes. Mr. Dykoff? Yes. Mr. Giuliano? Yes. Mayor McDonald? Yes. Can we have a motion to adjourn? Move it. Second. Aye. There'll be no official action taken after this executive session.